Doctor Who, The Trial of a Time Lord 2, Mind Warp, The Ninth Story of the Sixth Doctor. It's written by Philip Martin and starring Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant. So originally, BBC Radiophonic Workshop was going to be used for music then to Malcolm Clark, but got assigned to Elizabeth Parker, but Radiophonic Workshop composer Jonathan Gibbs left early in 1986 and didn't get replaced, so there has been a struggle to find a music composer. Dick Mills got suggested for both sounds and musics, but John Nathan Turner turned him down, so he hired Richard Hartley to do incidental music, and sadly his original score doesn't exist in BBC archives. So he and Mark Ayres redo the score for presenting the story. So at the Time Lord space station, the Inquisitor reminds the Doctor and Valiards that it's a court of law. And I like the bit when she reminds the Doctor that the Valiard's name, instead of making fun of it like Brickyard, Backyard, Knacker's Yard, or any other kind of yard. My yard. <laughs> Your yard. So the Time Lords watch the footage on screen where the Doctor and Perry arrived in Thoros Beta, and I love the colours of the beach. It's neon 1980s and it's so cool and beautiful. So the Doctor and Perry went in the caves looking at the machines that set off the alarm, and Frax arrived just after the Doctor accidentally killed the Roke. So they arrested the Doctor and Perry, but luckily he pushed the big desk where the corpse is at him and make a run for it. The bit where Dorf appeared is so terrifying. Meanwhile, Syl and Kiv are sitting on their slimy beds eating stuff, but Syl got warned about the death of Rogue. The Doctor and Perry went in the lab and found King Erkanos being experimented on. As the Doctor unplugged a few wires, Syl and the people came. The Doctor was about to get his mind probed with him screaming in agony, which is a scary cliffhanger. So King Erkanos woke up and raging. The Doctor woke up and ended up being possessed. As the Doctor, Perry and Erkanos are in the cave, the Doctor in court doesn't remember as he's being possessed, but Valiard denies it. As Perry tries to kill Syl, the Doctor warns him and become friends with Syl. As Perry looks around, she's caught by Frax. So Perry hits him in the stomach and ran off and bumped into Canny. She disguised herself as a servant to spike the Doctor to get him to be himself again, but didn't go as planned. So later Perry got tied up on the rocks at the sea with the Doctor questioning her. That seems pretty brutal. Nicola Bryant didn't like that scene because she didn't like the sea, which is understandable. Meanwhile, Erkanos has found Dorf and plans to hunt the Doctor down. So in the tunnel that looks like a roller coaster tunnel with the lights, which is pretty cool, the Doctor tells Perry he'll do what he think is best, which is a sad scene because that's the last time we see them together. So Erkanos came with Dorf and about to shoot the Doctor, and this is getting scarier. Again, Colin Baker is brilliant as the Sixth Doctor. I like him a lot. Him being possessed is fantastic. Nicola Bryant is great as Perry Brown. Her chemistry with the Doctor I liked. Michael Jaston and Linda Bellingham are great as the Valiard and Inquisitor. Brian Blessed played King Erkanos, who's a warlord of Thordon and a warrior king. I thought he's pretty badass. Before Brian Blessed was casted, the actors were considered for the role are George Baker, John Carson, Phil Collins, Michael Craig, James Ellis, Peter Gilmore, Don Henderson, Bernard Hill, Derek Jacobi, Strafford Johns, Dennis Lill, John Reese davis Clifford Rose, David Warner, and Frank Winster. I heard when they shot a scene, Brian swore. Colin and Nicola were expecting him getting told off by John Nathan Turner. But John said, Brian, you're not helping, which is because he didn't remember the lines. <laughs> it is pretty funny. They made the character similar to his character in Flash Gordon, Prince Volton, which is cool. Nabil Shaban played Syl, who's a mentor who works as representative from the planet Thoros Beta. He first appeared in Vengeance on Veros. I thought he looks pretty grim and a fun kind of villain. Christopher Ryan plays Kiv, the leader of Mentors, who gets in the habit of getting his mind into anyone's bodies. Christopher later played General Stahl and Commander Stark in Doctor Who, Modern Era. Patrick Reichardt played Crozier, a psychopathic scientist who helps transplanting Kiv's mind into anyone's bodies. Before he got casted, the actors who were considered for the role are Nicholas Ball, Andrew Burt, Michael Cochrane, Phil Collins, Peter Firth, Jack Galloway, Clive Merrison, Jeff Rowell, Simon Rouse, Paul Shelley, David Warner, James Warwick, 
and Simon Williams. Trevor Laird played Frax, who serves mentors, and yes, that's the same actor who played Clive Jones in Series 3, Martha Jones' dad. Thomas Branch played Dorf, a humanoid werewolf, who's a Krontep and was the acquiry of King Gyrkonos. I thought he was terrifying. Ali Parsons played Canny, aka Matrona, who's a senior servant. Gordon Warneck played Tusa, the leader of the Tharos Alphan. Richard Henry played Marn, a mentor who's a medical officer. And Deep Roy played Posecarian, a reptilian humanoid, which I thought he looked pretty cool. The cast did a great job. There's great sets, effects, and music by Richard Hartley. So Perry stopped King Yerkanos from killing the Doctor, so she, Yerkanos, and Dorf went away in the cave and sat around for a bit. The scene when they're fighting and Perry shut them up was pretty scary and funny. So the Doctor, Crozier, Matrona, Canny, and the scientists are working on Kiv's new body, where he can resurrect in, which is interesting stuff. Syl was pretty concerned and hoping he will live, and well, he did, despite the cardiac arrest. Perry, Yerkanos, and Dorf gets captured by Tusa, Thoros, Alphans, and apparently a friend of Tusa got aged to death. So Frax came in with soldiers. They stung everyone, including Perry. As the doctor watches it in court, he denies that it's his fault because he wasn't there. Avaliod said in the doctor's mind it wasn't his fault, but reality is somewhat different. So the evidence continued further. Everyone woke up and got taken inside the cage. I love the nice conversation between Perry and Yerkanos. So then Perry gets taken to the lab to get experimented on. The Doctor came to the cage with Frax. The Doctor is himself again and tricks Frax to lock himself up and set Yerkanos and Dorf free so they fight on. After confronting Mentor, Tuser is set free and Dorf sadly dies. Still witness Crozier shaving Perry's hair off and giving her the mind of Kiv, which is horrible. So the Doctor tries to save Perry but the TARDIS appeared and the Doctor got pulled inside and set to the Time Lord space station, which is where the trial begins. Everything gets blurry. Perry woke up with deep voice saying she's the Lord and Master. So Yerkanos fires the phaser and everything gets blurred away, which is really bizarre. Protect me! I am the Lord and Master! The Doctor in court is horrified what he saw. The Inquisitor said they had to act. They had to end Perry's life because it affected the universe, which is really sad. The Doctor plans to find out about the reason of taking him out of time. Wonder what's going to happen? So yeah, I enjoyed this story. What did you think of The Trial of a Time Lord Part 5-8, to 8, aka Mind Warp? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks people, as always, for watching and see you in the next video. Yeah! <laughs>